Hello again, a new day, a new project. Let's fix a subwoofer today. That's a no name subwoofer, 18 inch loudspeaker, amplified with a crossover, an active crossover, and I don't know anything about it. Let's open it up. You know, uh, it's looking like uh, amplifier get burned. It's a TDI 7294. A uh, very easy to fix uh, amplifier. You just take off the IC and put a new one. There is another problem over here. One of the potentiometers get broke, so we have to fix that too. That's a pretty generic uh, subwoofer. It's nothing special about. What I like about is that you can choose your frequency, I may say. It's uh, imagine like a flashlight searching for the right point. It's exactly the same situation here. Uh, with this one, you can choose where the filter is going down. Where is the fall? Where is the fall of the filter? And that uh, it's working from 40 Hz to 150. This one needs to be replaced. And of course, we have to see what is happening over there with the TDA7294. Hopefully it's just a fuse or something, but anyway, it doesn't look good. I can see a little bit of uh, <laughs> black or smoke over there, so that means problems. <laughs> Let's start with a simple diagnostic. First thing we got to check, it's the cable, the mains cable. That should be very easy. Get your multimeter, put it on buzzer, or continuity test. We got the sound here. That's okay. This is okay too. So the cable is fine. Then we should check the engines here. The DC input. These two pins. Yeah, I heard something. Uh, it's one of the capacitor in parallel over here. Let's put it to on. Yes. And we got like 19.1 ohms. That's okay. That's the primary that's the primary coil of the transformer. So, the transformer, it's okay. The input to the transformer, it's okay. That means the fuse in here, it's fine. Now, let's check these two fuses over here. And this is bad. And this is burned too. Okay, maybe I'm lucky and, and it's only the fuses. Let's take the fuses out. But before anything else, let me check the power supply. Let's see if we have any power. This is on, but I can't see any LED about power, but we can check over there if we have any voltage. And that's AC because it's coming straight uh, directly from the transformer. So we have the ground. Oh, of course we got power. So it's 58 totally. It should be like two times 30 volts here. Yeah. 29, 30 volts here. And 30 volts over here. So this is fine. The transformer, it's okay. Let me find some fuses. Okay, I couldn't find any calibrated fuses around my bench and that sucks. But we can improvise. This kind of amplifier, let's say, is delivering 100 watts of audio power. If it's 100 watts, it needs at least 150 watts of uh, main power. If, you, if we consider 60 volts and power is voltage by intensity, that means the intensity over here, let's consider 60 volts, it will be like 150 watts divided by 60 volts. And that's like 2.5 amps. 
Yes, you'll say, why not calibrate fuses? I don't have them right now. So I have to go downtown to shop for some. Let's see. Somehow I managed to put the fuses back in place. Yeah, this is perfect. And the other one. Yeah. Okay guys, I have to mention that we have no we have no load. So let's put the volume down first of all and let's see what's happening. Power on over here and over here too. Go. Oh yes. You know what that means? The amplifier is kaput. Sorry for that. Game over. This has been worked before. You see over here, there are traces of burnt traces or something. Okay. I got the parts over here, but I'm still not convinced about the the power amplifier, the TDA7294. Because, let's see, we have, there is no obvious short anywhere. The electrolytic uh, capacitors are okay. The rectifier bridge, well, what to see? Rectifier bridge, is it in short? This is minus over here. That's the power minus. And then it's on pin 13. So it's looking like we have a short to minus and plus. I have doubts that is the rectifier bridge. And luckily we have a we have a strap here between minus and P15. We can take that out to check only the circuit. My beloved and trusty TS100 goes to 350 degrees. Let's see if we still have the short on the rectifier bridge. Everything is fine over here. So that's the end of the investigation. 7294, it's in short. Let me have a good one. These are brand new. And let's measure. Okay. So we have, this is 15 and this is 13. That's a good one, of course. And now, a little trick. The simplest way to take all of this out is just to cut or to break the legs. We don't need this anymore, so we don't have to be worried about, yeah. You'll say it's hot. You know, these things are hot. Okay, here they are. But if you move quickly, and if you are fast enough, then it's okay. Now let's clean a little. How can we get that, those holes clean without any special equipment? Let me show you, very easy. Use a stick like this, look. This is wood, so let's put the new one in place. Let's put the soldier here. So we put everything back in place. I have the loudspeakers connected. Well, there's the single loudspeaker, I have it in my house. And it's moment of truth. I know it's looking very ugly over here, but if it's working, it's working. And that's it. Loudspeaker is on. All we have to do now is to put on the power. Let me see if it's working the classic way. Perfect. Now, it's time to have the preamp and everything back there. Oh, oh man, it's really hot. TDA7294, they are really nice integrated circuits. Really nice power amplifier. I may say they are pretty classic amplifiers and they are working great, reliable and uh, 
powerful in the same time. Okay, so that's the moment of three now. On. Okay, we have a LED over there, LED, and we should have a signal. Perfect, this is perfect. And now all I have to do is to put all the things together, put the heat sink back, new uh, tank paste, and we are ready to go. Good. Let's tie it a little bit better. Let's tie it. Let's tie it. Okay. Perfect. I think it's fine. That should be fine. But we still have something to do here. So we have these screws to keep the heat sink in place. So here we are back in the restaurant. Let's put the amplifier back in the, into the cabinet. A couple of screws and the job is done. Let's connect the loudspeaker over there. Then we put the signal cable and everything will be okay. There was a problem with the signal cable too. It was disconnected and I have to solder it back. So I may say the job is done, the subwoofer is working again. The problem was fixed and I hope uh, it helps you somehow. Don't forget to subscribe and support my future projects. Thank you, bye bye, be safe.